Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be reading Shaowak's Listener by me. So let's get into it. You and Shao have been getting closer and closer. And honestly, after three years of being a couple, everything felt perfect. Like you just fit in with each other. Like that's how the world was meant to be. The two of you in each other's arms. Feeling the love that was between you. That nobody else could interrupt. Or destroy. But. Sometimes. Life itself was not so kind. And Cha knew that very well. He had experienced it firsthand. Life. Stealing people that he loved away from him. And one by one. Until he was all alone. Until he had you again. And that's why he's so intent on not losing you. On protecting you. Because he knows how fragile the gift of life could be. He knows it doesn't really matter whether you're human or not. In a moment, life can disappear. Right before your eyes, when you least expect it. And that's why he was careful, always careful and trying to do his best to make sure you were always protected, to make sure you were always safe. And for the most part, it worked. And also, as for you, he just tried to get him to stress less, to be happier, to be more comfortable around you without thinking and trying so hard to keep you safe when you didn't see any harm in the way. It all started with soft kisses when you started dating. And right now, Xiao doesn't blush when you kiss him anymore. It's something usual, like greeting, seeing him and kissing him. No thoughts and no words attached. Just a kiss. And somehow, you had gotten him to the point where he's comfortable with it. Like it's nothing remarkable to him anymore. Not that he didn't like it. Every kiss that you gave him was perfect and was very special to him. And it was at this point that Xiao felt like everything was perfect. That things could not get better. That life had to turn around. And flip everything upside down. You were a little bit excited. As you went downstairs. About to tell Shao something. You had found out that there was this party that your friend was throwing. And you were extremely excited about it. So as you were running down the stairs. Yelling out Shao's name. You happened to trip and fall. Shao was just downstairs. And he was just a second too late to catch you. Watching as you tumble down the stairs. Helpless to do anything to help you. He managed to catch you halfway before your head hit the ground. And he held you in his arms. His hands trembling. Wyan. Wyan. Are you awake? Please. Please be okay. He says. That's Brett. But then he notices the blood. That was falling down from your head. And that's when he panics. Everything sits in his mind. He was losing you. Every second mattered. And one second could tear you away from him. Forever. He immediately carries you. And teleports to Vizu. Wanting to get help from him. He sits you down on the bed. And he can't help but tremble. The way his hands just keep shaking. The way his face goes paler than it already is. Please, help her. I can't lose her. He says, pleading with everything that he has. And Baizu can only do his best. Telling him to leave the room so you can operate safely. But, things are a little bit more dangerous than that. Because then... That's when he finds out that you were pregnant. 
And right now you could have died. You had no idea how to deal with the shadow. You were extremely unstable. And it was a life or death decision. Whether or not you could keep the baby. And whether keeping the baby itself will keep you alive. Xiao, we need to talk. What is it? Is she okay? Does she need anything? I can find her blood. If the blood loss is too much, then I can... No. It's not that. Then what is it, Baizu? Wan is pregnant. Xiao stands there in pure shock. He's just unable to process. I mean, what's he to do with that information? After having you fall down the stairs. Unconscious and completely unstable. He was panicking a little bit. But Baizu held him by the shoulders. Looking into his eyes. Look, Xiao. We don't have to make a decision right now. There is still a chance that it might be okay. But I had to tell you. She should be conscious soon. So you need to be able to talk to her. Calm down. We don't want her to panic. And Xiao just does that. It's hard. Difficult and almost virtually impossible. But it tries its absolute best. Just for you. And he manages. He manages to actually calm down. To get his mind straight. And once you're awake, he's sitting by your side and holding your hand. Shell, what happened? You fall down the stairs. You frown a little bit, apologizing to him. But he shakes his head. Wyon, did you know that you're pregnant? You look at him for a while, trying to register what he was saying. But then... With a look of shock and sadness, you shake your head. No, no, I didn't. Is the baby okay? You ask him, tears welling up in your eyes. Look, it's okay right now. But you're unstable. We, you could die. It's you or the baby until you stabilize. If you stabilize. And looking at him, you wrap your arms around him tightly, bringing him in closer. There's still time, he said. So we'll wait. We don't need to hurry. But I would rather be with you. I'm not ready to lose my life right now. And we can try again. Right, Chow? And Chow is relieved. No, he's over the moon. Because he wouldn't be able to handle losing you. He wrapped his arms around it tightly. Kissing your forehead. Perfect. I'm happy with that. <laughs>